Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is taken from our Gospel lesson, John chapter 1, verses 43 through 49. It was read a few moments ago. Your fellow redeemed in Christ. Today, we have the privilege of remembering and honoring one of the auxiliary, longtime auxiliary groups of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod called the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. The LWML was founded on the principle of serving the Lord with gladness. For decades, this group of faithful Lutheran women has supported the gospel outreach of local churches and has de helped deliver comfort, the comfort of Jesus Christ to all kinds of people worldwide. Many people have benefited from the numerous acts of charity, the quilts, the support of local chaplaincy, the layettes, and much, much more, all supplied by our own group of the LWML. And so today we thank God for their work. We thank God for working through these faithful women. And we thank God for their partnership in calling people to come and see the Savior, Jesus Christ. Come and see. It's our theme for today. You see it on your bulletin cover. You heard it in our, in our intro at lesson. You heard it in our gospel reading. Come and see. It was Philip's message to Nathaniel. Come and see. And it must be our message to those who do not know the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Come and see. It's a rather simple message when you think of it. Yet I think Christians, you and me, we get bogged down, bogged down in what to say when sharing our faith. I don't know how many people have come to me over the past 15 years that I've been a pastor and have said to me, Pastor, I just don't know what to say. How to share my faith, I just don't know what to say. Maybe that's how Philip felt in our text. Notice he doesn't say a whole lot. He says, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And then he simply invites Nathaniel to come and see. Philip could have gone through all kinds of proof texts, all kinds of things that would try to convince Nathaniel. But rather than doing that, Philip lets the gospel do its work of creating faith. Come and see. It was a rather simple message. But sometimes that's all that's needed. In fact, it's how we all came to faith, is it not? Someone said to us, come and see. Maybe it was our parents who, who brought us to God's house, brought us to Sunday school and confirmation class. Come and see this Jesus, who Moses wrote about in the law and who the prophets proclaimed. Come and see this Jesus, born of a virgin, who suffered for our sake who died for our sins and who rose again on the third day and ascended into heaven. Come and see this Jesus who now rules all things for our good and who will come again to judge both the living and the dead. Come and see your Lord who dines with sinners, with us as we feast upon his body and blood here in a few short moments. Come and see your Savior. Our text says that Nathaniel came and he saw, and more importantly, Nathaniel believed. 
In fact, so strong was Nathanael's faith that the Holy Spirit caused him to make a great confession. He said, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Now, some have drawn a comparison between Nathanael in John's Gospel and Bartholomew in Luke's Gospel suggesting that Nathaniel and Bartholomew are actually one and the same people. If that's the case, then Nathaniel was privileged to join the ranks of the apostles, all because someone simply said to him, come and see. Tradition suggests Nathaniel or Bartholomew, if you will, went as far as Ethiopia, in India, in Armenia. In Armenia, it is said that he shared the gospel with King Polemus through a miraculous he healing of the king's daughter. Yet so upset were the false priests of the king over his conversion that they successfully conspired with the king's brother to have Nathaniel killed. And according to tradition, now, this gets a little bit gruesome, but according to tradition, Nathaniel was flayed like a fish. He was skinned alive, crucified, and beheaded. In fact, the great painter Michelangelo depicts the final scene of judgment on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, and he includes St. Bartholomew there. He's there holding his skin like a garment. Now, you may wonder, why recount these details about Nathaniel? Indeed, he made a great confession. And according to history, he suffered mightily at the hands of wicked people, dying a horrendous death for the sake of the faith. But neither event is unique in the history of Christianity Billions of people have confessed Christ Jesus as the Son of God and the King of Israel, including all of you at some point in your life. Many thousands have died a martyr's death, giving their life for the sake of their confession of Jesus Christ. Even in our own day, who could forget all of those Christians on the beach in Libya in orange jumpsuits? as one by one ISIS, ISIS soldiers beheaded them and murdered them for their faith. So these things aren't new to even us today. So all things considered, Bartholomew's life was not necessarily unique among believers. Yet at the same time, his life can serve as an example to us all. It was John the baptizer who said about Jesus, he must increase and I must decrease. You see, Christian worship is not at all about the Christian. But it is all about the Christ. It is true every time a Christian gathers to worship in truth and spirit. For example, holy matrimony, should not be about the bride. But it should be about the marriage of Christ to his bride, the church. Likewise, a Christian funeral should not be about the deceased, but about Christ working in and through the deceased. What he has done throughout his life to work in and through that person who has died in the faith. Even today, on this LWML Sunday, it's not really about the LWML. It's about what God has done and continues to do through the faithful women of the LWML. And this message, it's not about Nathaniel Bartholomew, but it is about Christ who worked in and through his servant so that others may come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. 
In the same way, our lives must never be about us, but always about Jesus, who works in and through us. In our text, Nathaniel was brought to faith because one person, one person simply said, come and see. That's it. That's really all he said. Come and see. And from those simple words, Nathaniel's life was changed. No longer did he fear what others might say about him or do to him. But with all boldness, he confessed Jesus Christ crucified, died, risen, and ascended. Who was the person who pointed you to Jesus? Who was the person or persons who said to you, come and see your Savior? How has that changed your life? Knowing that Jesus came for you knowing that he came to die for all of your sins, knowing that he rose to life so that you might spend eternity with him and with all who have died in the faith, knowing that your Savior today invites you once again to come and to see the hidden and the bread and wine are his body and blood given and shed for you. And knowing that one day Christ will return and will claim you as his child forever and ever. Knowing all these things, Jesus now desires you to go out from this place and invite others to come and see. Invite them to come and see the goodness of God. Come and see what God has done for them in Jesus Christ. Come and see their Savior who died for them, who rose again for them, and who ascended for them, and who will come again for them. Today is not about the Christian. It's not about Nathaniel. It's not about you and me. It's not even about the LWML. Rather, today is all about Jesus Christ. What he has done through people like Philip and Nathaniel. It's all about what God is doing right now through you and me. And it's about what he continues to do through the faithful women of the LWML. God has chosen you to be his child of grace in Jesus Christ. His spirit has made your body his dwelling place. Though we may think that we are utterly lacking, that we are unfit to be messengers of Jesus, know that God wouldn't have it any other way. He has chosen you to carry his message to the world. In fact, you might say God works best when we are weak, when we are poor, even when we're at our very worst. You see, at those times, God's power is made perfect in us through Jesus Christ. That's what St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with my weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. Therefore, my friends, there are no more excuses. We can no longer say, I don't know what to say when it comes to sharing our faith, because it is precisely through our inability that God's ability shines through. God's ability shines through you and onto everyone else. So do you know someone who is struggling? Do you know someone who doesn't know 
Jesus as their Lord and Savior? If you do, then today our Lord is asking you to invite them, to lead them to the Bible, to bring them to church, to urge them to come and see all that Jesus has done for them. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.